First of all, let's see how to create a new group starting from instance from entities which are already within a drawing that we have just loaded. So, in this drawing, we have some entities that we are going to aggregate, creating a group. We can apply the command in several ways, by the icon, by using Insert Group New, then selecting, of course, Entities, or as an alternative, we can first select Entities, then by the context menu, Insert New Group. We can reset its origin and obviously type in the name of our group. Moving to Edit Properties, in addition to the general information, we can view the information about the group, such as its name, if the group is shared or not, and so on. Now, we notice that even document properties includes a tab about the group and its appearance. That is, the different colors used for the group among the main items. The color when creating the group, must it be the current one or a specific color? the color of entities outside the group, and the color of the group when it's closed. Well, let's set the group as current, because we want to insert some new entities. Only once the group has been set as current, we can go on and enter new entities. Then, in case of need, we can even change it. So we insert a circle, we change. After this, we cancel undesired parts by Smart Delete. And we modify, for example, the center line. Let's zoom in. And by the modify entities command, we can extend the center line. We go back to the drawing by reset current group. Therefore, the group is closed. It's displayed as closed. And in the drawing structure, there is an icon representing it. We can change the properties related to the drawing structure, asking to show all entities, both the ones inside the group and the ones outside the group by all. We can open the group from the drawing structure or from the context menu command. When the group is open, we can make changes but we can insert no entity inside the group, so we make the desired change changes, then we close our group. Now, if we insert an entity, a circle, it will be placed at the level of the drawing and not inside the group. We can transfer the entity we have just inserted inside the group by setting the group at the current one, selecting the circle and applying the transfer to current group command. Now, if we reset the group as current, we can even carry out another action, transferring entities from a group to another. We create a temporary group that we call 2002. OK. The first group the one selected is the starting group, the other one is the destination group. We need to set the destination group as current, while the starting group must be open to be able to select entities. We select the circle, then we select the transfer to current group command. The circle now belongs to the main group, while the other entities, center lines, have remained outside, in other terms, they have remained in the starting groups. group. Now let's cancel this temporary group and let's see in option properties the part concerning libraries. Basically, this is the folder including our group libraries. We open the library and we insert this group simply by dragging it. We can move it from a folder to another, OK, by cut and paste. Once a group has been inserted, let's see how to use it 
in a new drawing. We have two possible modes. Here we are. New drawing. We drag the group to the drawing or we click on insert which allows us also to specify the scale and the angle of insertion. For instance, let's set a 90 degree angle and a scale of 2. From the drawing structure, we can notice that these two groups have the same name but a different look and feel, as one is actually scaled and rotated by 90, while the other one is a starting group. This is a typical characteristic of non-shared groups. They have the same name, even though the graphic representation is different. Now let's see how to customize a title block, starting from an existing one. By insert drawing frame and title block, we insert a title block. We can choose the size, the orientation, the scale, the drawing frame, and finally, the title block. Let's insert it. OK. From the drawing structure at this step, we notice that is a single group composed of a title block group, in turn composed of further subgroups. Well, now let's see how to create a new group. First of all, we compress the drawing to clean it and conform the tolerances to each other, the tolerances of entities which were inserted in this drawing. Let's delete the layers without entities, OK. Then we go back to the drawing structure and we break, first of all, the format group Edit break, OK. So that only title block is left. Then we delete all the lines of the frame, leaving just our group. Then we're going to break also the title block group of the title block. We do break it and we notice that the different items are composed of little groups, subgroups. We set a current one of these groups, OK, composed of a descriptive test and a part which is a symbolic test, basically displaying the value of the property. From document properties, we select text and we uncheck the symbolic test expansion, OK. We redraw texts and notice that in practice we have a series of texts with a specific syntax. To insert one of these texts, we just use the standard test command, selecting the text from dictionary option and for instance, part properties. OK. Just as an example, we select material and we notice that the text is similar to those already existing in our title block, therefore the syntax is $M. This is a simple text, so we can access its properties and make changes, such as, for instance, conforming to the style used for the text already existing in our title block. That's why we can run all the standard operations that we usually carry out on tests. OK. Let's go back to Option Properties and let's now select the Symbolic Text Expansion. So, we draw the text to view again then with the standard look and feel. Redraw Tests, OK. We cancel the text used as example that we had just introduced and we possibly make some general changes of the look and feel 
just to recognize this title block when we are going to position it once it has been saved. So we make some simply graphical changes, such as deleting some entities, modifying the text of the logo, for instance from Think Design to Think D. OK. Then we select the title block and apply the copy move command. OK. With the support of the handle, we move the origin of the title block to the work plane origin. This for a more effective use of the title block in future. OK. When the move action is over, we can save our title block. We save it by Save as Title Block. We give it a name, for instance, TDTBL. Name and description don't need to be identical, actually. The description is the one that we'll be able to view anyway upon choosing the title block when we use the insert drawing frame and title block command. Let's now see how to use this newly created title block in a new drawing, for instance. Here we are, new drawing, OK. So we use the insert drawing frame and title block command. We select, for instance, orientation and so on. Then we select the title block that we have just saved. We confirm. And here we are. This is actually the title block that we have just changed and saved. Finally, we close the drawing without saving changes.